A word for our listeners. Season 2 of Masks of Nyarlathotep is set in the 1930s and 40s. We will be using terms and sayings from those times, including some that could be considered offensive. It's not our intention to offend. We merely wish to offer as accurate a view of the time period as possible. Welcome to Masks of Nyarlathotep, a Nerds Domain gaming podcast. Join us each week as our commandos uncover the corruption of the mythos in World War II. Starring Johnny Brown, Ed Maudlin, Chris Dunn, and Matt Quiet, with John Quiet running the table as Keeper. Eldritch evils and crazed Nazi cultists await you just beyond this music. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Nerds Domain Presents Masks of Nyarlathotep. I'm Matt and I'm here with John. Hello. And Rob. Hello. Colin. Still not in the intro. <clears throat> you know what? Season 3 is coming up soon. I'm re-recording all the intros. Like that is on the plate. I believe it when I see it. Through. Will you? When you see it? Or when you, you hear, hear it? it? We'll see. Yeah. Uh, and Ed. It's really not fair that I'm in the intro. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> notes for new intro. Take Ed out. Um, and joining us as a guest this week, uh, Shirley. I'm not even supposed to be here. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, not even supposed to be here today. So, John, remind us since... 37. Go on. <laughs> hey. <laughs> wow. Um, you said that. I'm like, what is he talking about? Oh, yeah, that no, took me a, until yeah, no. you said it. I didn't yeah. get it. Um, I now get it. John. Oh, right, me. Ru- you are running the game. I am. <laughs> are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, why don't you tell us what happened last time? Since it's been a c- little bit of time since for, the last time we recorded. Yeah, for us all to be together. So, uh, the short version for our listeners at home. Uh, is that the commandos and uh, their new, what do we call her, an intelligence attache? Uh, yes. Yeah. You Evie, can say that. Evie McCree um, had gone out to speak to Frau Koppen, the wise woman in, that lived in the woods near their base. And um, she had told them, uh, in the process of asking several questions, uh, a story had come up about a doctor that lived in a nearby town. Um, uh, his last name was Van Dyke. And he had been looking into some weird things that uh, the commandos felt they needed to go interview the doctor and find out um, what he was up really up to. Um, so everybody had piled into a truck and uh, headed out. You guys got to the village um, and the doctor was willing to talk to all of you, but, um, he had, he claims he had abandoned his research, um, that he had done with, with Frau Koppen and buried his notes in his, in his, um, library somewhere upstairs. Mm-hmm. Um, some, it got tense for a minute, but then everybody calmed down, um, Wow, why am I drawing a blank on your character's name, Matt? We got in an argument. Corey <laughs> yeah. Loveridge. Loveridge. Uh, Loveridge volunteered to stay behind and assist the doctor in looking for those notes. Um, while, oops, sorry. Uh, and during the during that conversation, um, well, something happened. We'll get into that in just a minute. Sure. Because uh, that's what we're going to open up. Um, but while Loveridge was doing that, Evie had stormed out of the place and gone back to her steamer trunk that she had brought with her that had all of her notes and weird occultness uh, observations and had gone through some of that. Um, and she had uncovered a connection between this weird symbol that you all saw on the doctor's door um, that vanished, and some otherworldly elder god stuff, and that kind of bothered her. 
but we left her uh, sitting in the truck going through her notes. And as a reminder, we more than one of us has seen it, right? Oh, yeah. You all saw it. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. That was what was weird about it. Sorry. <laughs> you um, saw it carved into essentially the keystone above the doctor's door on the outside. It was... It looked as though it had been etched into the stone, Mm -hmm. but when you went back to check on it, um, it was gone, almost as though it had never been there. And then um, I believe you saw it in a different place in the square as uh, the last three members of our group were headed across the square to the town's tavern, hotel tavern, whatever um, you want to call it. I think it was carved into a fence post for okay. a minute, and then they went inside the tavern. And um, while they while in there, some of the locals had um, come in just to see what the strangers were doing, had a had a quiet drink, and left. And um, the bartender and his wife had sort of stopped doing anything; just were kind of staring off into space and that piqued the the commando's interest yeah so uh levon had gone over to speak with the the woman and she started asking about his history um in a weird way that sort of set off alarm bells for him so we we and then we cut that scene there. So we're gonna open back up. The doctor had been asking me about my history as well. Oh yes, the okay. yeah. So yeah, we're gonna open back up at the tail end of that scene, um, uh, with Corey. Okay. Um. So, yeah, you um. You're you are handed some notes. He says the doctor says this is uh. Um. This is what I I found from uh, or, or these are the notes that I took um, under Frau Coppen's uh, consultation, if you will. Okay. Um, I think this is all everything you're looking for. It it seems complete anyway. Um, hopefully, this has the information you were all looking for. Um, but yes, um, so what? Uh, what are the, your next steps? What are you what, are you going to be staying in town for the evening? Um, it depends on what uh, the commander says. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, it was um, lovely meeting you. Let me know if I can be of any further assistance. Um, that uh, um, story again. I'm I'm very sorry about your people. Um, he said, we, you've lost so much, but I hope my uh, words were able to comfort you. Um, and, you know, our shared experiences might, uh, lead you to find, um, comfort in your loss. And when he says that, it's sort of like, you, you try to picture the people that you used to know. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the. How would you describe what happened when Corey went back to the village and found it completely devoid of people? Empty? I'm not sure what you mean by describe. How how did Corey feel when he found that? Was he... Uh, the, the very empty, disturbing. Did you have people there, family? Was yeah. there yeah, yeah. like wife and children? Or no, no, no. But y- you were just an outsider who was finding your place in the village. No, I had like mother, my mother and father, and my siblings lived there still. I'd probably oh. say my my grandparents. I had never married. Okay, I'm unmarried. I didn't feel like it was right to marry and be out all the time in various parts of the world, soldiering and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you lost some substantial, real, substantial yeah, connections. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In doing that, and you know, uh, so. Yeah, you don't know what it is about talking with the doctor, but like the the idea that others have lost as much as you mm-hmm. is maybe comforting. And sure. and um 
it kind of it for a moment it kind of surprises you you can't remember their faces the way you you know you used to you know be able to recall them it's maybe it's just been too long but it, you know you're like huh that's odd and 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 as soon as the realization comes upon you the the like maybe a little bit of fear and regret or whatever that just kind of washes away and you just you feel yourself go back to to neutral um so i'm okay with that you are you've accepted it maybe would be the right way um it's it doesn't bother you that it had but it it's just a thing that happened now okay um okay so um you walk out the front door and see the truck that you all came in on um and Evie is climbing out the back. And like I said, you have a pile of papers and a folder. Have we been addressing her as Miss McCree? I don't. Rem- I think so. Probably to be proper. Miss McCree, uh, here are the notes that um, he had. Um, this is what he could find. So, oh, well. you had just discovered some information. Um. What had you had discovered? Some things. What? How? What right. are you feeling? What's going through your mind right at this moment as you climb out of the back of the truck? So we, um, it was kind of very hurried. So I was rushing through things. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like uh, Corey would have been put under a spell um, because that's what was happening as we left, and he was just. You guys saying, were all out of the room at that point in time so you don't know about what happened no that's why i pulled the gun on him because i knew he was going to cast a spell remember i had the rifle and then Corey was gonna go get the gun and he's like okay let's go ahead and start shooting this place up and then the guy started talking to him and there was a sense of lull did that ha- okay so that yes am i mm-hmm. misremembering I'm okay uh, yeah but you all you all allowed him to stay in the house while you all left. I don't remember exactly what happened, but I went to go find <laughs> out why it was having such an effect and the um the symbol mm-hmm. because I remembered like okay, I know that this has something to do with it. If I find out about it, maybe I can break the spell. Okay. So, he stayed, they went to the tavern. And then I went to the the truck to find it. But I thought I ended up at the tavern with you guys. No. Nope. No. Nope. Oh, that was before we left. Um, so climbing out of the truck and I see him, I feel this sense of um, overwhelming relief. Because, and then I feel this overwhelming fear because what if he's been turned to the, <laughs> the dark side, so to speak. Sure. Um, and... Um, as he approaches me, I'm just going to be like, Leverage, you all right? I'm fine, why? And you said these are the notes? Yeah. Can I see them? I, yeah, I'm prepared uh, to hand okay, them to you. Yeah. Like, um, I found out that the symbol is um, loosely translated. It means the one that we saw over the door. Yeah. Uh, means that... Um, like, not everything is fine, but it's, like, a forgetting. Like, um, it makes things, what did you say? Um, it is linked to a place without suffering. Without suffering. Um, it's actually, have you ever heard of the dream, the dreamlands? Have I heard of the Dreamlands? I don't remember. You, we have. I've nope. never no mentioned it. No. no. Okay. There is a place where um, these occult things happen, and this is linked to a place that is a place without suffering. Okay. Um, but not in a good way. Not, you know, not like heaven <laughs> is a place without suffering. <laughs> um, so I need to still do more research on that and find out. What exactly that? Ha- what exactly um, 
those effects are on people. Um, but I was wondering what he had in his notes that he gave you. And honestly, it's the, that kind of research is not my forte, so I thought I'd just give it to you and let you look through it. All right. So I take the notes from him and walk side by side. Everybody else is at the tavern. Okay. I think we should go find out what's going on there. Sure. Okay. So just a moment. Um, we'll cut to the inside the tavern. Um, the barkeep still stands there wiping away at the counter. Um, his wife is talking to Colin, or I'm sorry, um, Levon, about his time uh, fighting against the, the rise of Mussolini um, in Italy. And, um, you know, like I said, she, she's asked, the last question she asked you is, um, you know, have, have you lost anyone in the fighting? And then you asked her, um, sort of dodging that question, um, what about you? What have you lost? Trying to turn it back on her. And all she says is, well, she has her husband. And then it's trailed off. Um, mm -hmm. So again, she's like, but, uh, you know, yeah, that's, it's, uh, it's horrible, isn't it? The fighting, the turmoil in the world these days. Yeah, it sucks real bad. No one likes it. Yeah. Um, uh, you have your husband. Did you have anyone else uh, as well or, or, or what? He's English. It's uh, not so good. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we speaking German? Yes. Yeah, because their native language it's is Flemish. German is not so good. This <laughs> um, is, well, yeah, um, my parents, obviously. Um, <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I looked... Um, my, my parents passed a few years ago, uh, you know, old age mm -hmm. and hardships of winter, that sort of thing. Okay. So it wasn't due to the war that we're currently living in. Not apparently. No. Okay. Cause they, Germany hasn't invaded yet. That's where we're going to. Okay. And in this season is is uh German invasion happens. Okay. Um I don't I don't know if I've asked this question or not, uh, but I'm gonna try it even if sure. I haven't. Uh I've been seeing this uh symbol around town and I was wondering if you know what it is. And I take I got like a drink in my rack, so I dip like my finger in it and I draw the symbol on the, the table that's in front of us and I ask her if she knows what it is. Um. It just seems that it, with it being around so many places in town that maybe some of the people that live in the town might know what it is and you living in the town maybe you know what it is. So her gaze her eyes before you draw the symbol her eyes follow your hand to dip it in the you know dip it in the drink yeah like you know like you know she sees what you're doing and um as you so you as you draw the the you draw the plus sign that's like the center of the symbol yeah and you make the first two marks in the top left hand quadrant mm -hmm. her her gaze just like kind of comes back up to your face like she doesn't even watch you draw the finish drawing the symbol and she's like yeah i've never seen it before and it, it's it's not like she turns away from looking at it she just sees what you're doing and and moves on like yeah okay. she she's um trying to it doesn't phase her that you're drawing this symbol at all mm -hmm. and she doesn't but she doesn't really look at it either like it's it's clear that something weird happened there. Okay. Like, all right. Uh, I noticed that she hasn't looked at the symbol, and I say, "Are you sure? Because it doesn't look like you've even looked at it. Could you look at it and then let me know if you've seen this thing or not?" Give me a perception of some kind. 
Okay. I don't have a character sheet in front of me, so I don't have a full skill list. Spot um, hidden. Spot hidden. There you go. Spot hidden. Okay. Um, okay, it's not... I don't have anything on it. It's just the base 25. And what am I... Okay, yeah, I know. Yeah, do. so 2d10. Two, two Let me get my crap out here. I got a five. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, I got a five. Nice. Yay. 525. Um, it's a critical success, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, there's not really a way to no. do a critical success, but yeah, full. He sees into he her sees, soul. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how do I want to describe this? You don't have any psychology or anything on your character sheet, do you? Uh, let's look. Probably not. Yeah, it's probably just the base one. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. the base. Okay. Um, so, like, her... She turns towards it, you know, since you, you directly asked her to look at it again. Mm -hmm. But... Um, her... she j And I assume you're like watching her face the whole time. Yes. Because that was the clue I dropped. Um, because of your because of your proximity, like no one else in the room would be able to see this. Sure. But because of your proximity, like when her eyes would hit the symbol, they lose focus. Like does that does that yeah. make sense? Like that, you can yeah. picture that? Like watching someone lose focus. It's like she's gazing through it. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. Of actually looking at it. Yeah. Yep, so, and and like her eyes kind of droop closed. So you know, at best, if she was looking at it, she'd be looking at it through you know her eyelashes. Yeah. And not really seeing it clearly. And she turns back like, no, you're perfectly pleasant. Now focus back on you. No, I I um I don't know anything. I don't, I've never seen that before. I don't know anything about it. Yeah, okay. Well. And at this point, we'll have uh, Corey and um, Evie come back into the room. Or come in, enter oh, the okay. room. Enter the, back not come the back. Room. Enter the tavern. How many people are checkers. in the tavern? Uh, five, seven. Oh, so it's the five of us plus. Plus the, the, two, the two workers. Locals, yeah. Okay. So all the locals left. Yeah, what all time, the other what, locals left. What time of day is it? It's afternoon, but... Um, so not prime, like, drinking time and right. not a meal time. Yeah. Okay. Work is still being done out in the village. So this makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. More or less. And then again, I this was something that came up. I just want to reiterate, since it has been two months for us, uh, She there's things that should maybe be, you know, should be happening to prepare for the evening business mm -hmm. and they're just the bartender's just like standing there and she was just standing in the corner not you know going up and chopping vegetables or prepping anything just you know so that was something that struck you as odd before mm -hmm. the return or the re-entry of, of these two characters so yeah so um when you walk in, the bartender kind of looks up and he says, uh, "Hello, welcome. Um, have a have a seat with your friends. Can I get you something to drink?" Which obviously, you know, is yeah. different behavior. Yeah. Three fingers of scotch. Scotch. Um, Whiskey. Give me, a, give me a minute. Uh, give me a minute. Rye, yeah. if not like. I'm sure he'll come up with some kind of grain alcohol, I'm sure. Bourbon? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do we have to go American? I think it's just the fact that it's a small town. He's not sure what he has on hand. He says, give me a moment. Uh, sure. And, and um, <coughs> ma'am? I'll just take a beer. That he can do. <coughs> um, so he ducks back into the kitchen for a minute, and you hear him uh, opening a cupboard and, and looking for something. Um do you guys want to do anything? He's just sit down. He's gonna just come out and pour it in the glass, and like the it's gonna poof, and the little skull and crossbones <laughs> is gonna come up out of it. Totally, that's exactly how this is gonna work, yeah. isn't it? 
yeah, a fly is going to, you know, come over the cup, of the, the glass a little too close. So to, to, fire. Yeah. to make sure that <laughs> I'm understanding, I, I now feel as though I have fully grieved for the loss of my family and it, am at peace with the situation. Right. Whatever stage you were at before, I was not that. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, it's you. The conversation you had with the doctor, he was talking about his daughter uh, passing away from an illness, and that was why he wanted to go uh, uh, meet with Frau Koppen, was that she was reputed to have ancient wisdoms and potentially could have done something to save his daughter but you know he wasn't in the area at the time okay so um he was he he just wanted to gather as much old world knowledge, medical knowledge as he could and pass it you know his, his story was he wanted to pass it through the lens of modern science okay. and see if there was something he could you know do, you know come up with out of that stuff and he had left it behind um in, in the past. Right. But like, you know, so anyway, basically he was talking about his losses and you know, the things he had suffered through. And the, the feeling you're left with is like, okay, there are other people who know what I'm dealing with. And it is, so it's, it doesn't hurt anymore. Okay. Like, like it, it didn't hurt, doesn't hurt like it used to. And maybe that's just, you know, you, he talked you through it and you've hit a, you had a breakthrough, you know, that totally is exactly yeah. what happened. Yeah. Well, boys, what'd you find out? Anything interesting over here? Uh, well, I'm still with the lady. So he's going to be talking to you too, right? Yeah. Sure. We've, um, senior, uh, Fisk. Fisk. Senior Fisk is, uh, talking with the locals. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the doctor gave us his notes. Uh, Miss McCree has those. I think, you know. I'm just sitting there, like, rifling through them and reading the pages. Is Captain Loveridge holding himself any differently? Oh, yeah. I don't seem, like, my face no longer has angry on it. Like, you probably didn't realize I looked angry, and now you realize that I don't look angry anymore. That shouldn't be worrying. (laughs) Right? (laughs) (laughs) And yet. Well, it's pretty quick. Uh, change. That's weird. I feel like I'm just sitting here getting drunk. Is my <laughs> mic on? Yeah. yeah. It is? I can't yeah. hear myself. Can you hear the rest of us okay? I can hear the rest of us. It must be okay. a little disconcerting to not hear yourself talk all the time. <laughs> okay, so the anger is transferred from <laughs> his face to mine. <laughs> Yeah, so... Um, no, you're coming through just fine. You're a little lighter. I think it's... I turned you down because you are a louder talker. Fair enough. So that sure. might be why. Yeah, that's cool. So, yeah. Um, uh, he The bartender comes back out with... Um, yeah, we'll, we'll just say a, a rye whiskey. <coughs> Something along the lines of you know moonshine or whatever, but right. not you know. And he says, uh, "Will this will this work, sir?" What would a bottle of this go for? W- let me rephrase that. Do I have the amount of cash that would appropriately buy a bottle like this on me? Would that be something I would have? I mean, this stuff is locally made. They can just churn up another. It's right, not but like no, it's assuming I was at in a big city. Oh yeah, I mean, okay. I'll give it, him, it would be hefty, but you know, I give him that and just a little bit more. Okay, and just say, you know, what, go ahead and leave the bottle. Thank you, sir. And he takes the money and um, returns behind the counter. And At I this will point, pour uh, mine if he didn't pour it already. Oh, he would. I guess he would have poured you. Is yeah. that strange for you? Like, have you not acted like that? Before? Uh, I don't think I've drunk drank in front of you guys more than like the smidgiest smidge of of whiskey in front of the three of you mm-hmm. like i know we probably mm. had i know we've had jack and i have had shots together but it was like Definitely. i had a drink and then maybe a second and that does not equate to what i've already poured into my glass mm. we are still on duty 
or uh, we're looking into some research. If Miss McCree can't figure it out, I'm pretty sure a little bit of alcohol isn't going to slow us down. Uh, Levon, do you want to continue speaking with the bartender's wife or rejoin the group? Uh, I notice, you know, when they walk in and I say, oh, the rest of my, uh, rest of my friends are here. I'm going to go, I'm going to go check them out. You have a, you have a weird day. I'll talk to you later. (laughs) Oh, uh, you know, okay. And, um... (laughs) Like, obviously, it looks a little, doesn't know how to take that comment um, exactly. <laughs> um, and as LaVon, you turn around and walk away at that point, like turn your back on mm-hmm. her and walk away or continue <laughs> to watch her. Like, what is your demeanor walking away at this back point? Back up slowly, okay. keeping eye talk, contact the whole time. Doing the whole hand thing. Uh, I... Uh, I uh, I get up, I nod to her, and then I just turn around and walk away from her. Okay. Um, so the people at the table might notice, not Levon, since he has his back turned to her, that okay. she um, just she takes a rag and wipes up the the mess he made on the table, just just wipes it away without even looking at mm-hmm. where the symbol was. And then, you know, takes a rag and heads back into the kitchen. So you guys have uh, the room at the moment. Okay. But it does, I just, it does somewhat strike you as like just the blind plop, wipe, wipe, you know, gone. So. Okay. Was she looking at anything specific or just sort of off into the distance? Just off into the middle distance, yeah. Okay. But so. like, but like, she was averting her eyes from accidentally seeing the symbol. Yeah, I mean, it was, yeah. it's hard to say averting, but you know, she definitely didn't watch what she was doing. She Got just it. plopped it down, wiped it up. Okay. All right. So uh, I walk back over to the table where everyone is, and mm-hmm. I say, uh, "I don't know if you guys have caught on to this, but uh, we're in the middle of Weirdsville." Yes. Uh, lady was asking me weird questions about. Uh, my family, and I asked her about this symbol, and it didn't even look like she was looking at it. It looked like she was looking through it, and she said she didn't recognize it, even though how many places have we seen this thing in town, and they don't know what it is? Three or four. I, uh, I had a conversation with the doctor about my family, but it didn't seem to be too out of the ordinary. See, it came out of nowhere with this lady, and uh, I didn't answer any of her questions because... Uh, I don't know. I just don't seem to trust her very much. And also, she was a cold fish. I mean, I'm not going to get anywhere with her, so why am I giving her information? <laughs> she just kind of glares at you. <laughs> <laughs> Rolls her But eyes. mostly it's because she's weird. And some, something weird, something's going on in this town. I don't know what, because no one will give me any information, but something's going on. I mean, the doctor did give us his notes. I think we're pretty set on that. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that at the time, did I? No, I, uh, that's why I was telling you. Okay. Man. <laughs> you Italians. I'm fired up. Defensive much? First opportunity I get with a, a lady in a town, and she's all weird. And already married. Yeah. Two strikes. Married. <laughs> but not three. Not yeah. three. Yeah. She can still pull it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to her. The ball's in her court at this point. Mixing wow. sports metaphor. Wow, that's you're a, mixing sports. That's metaphor. how baseball works. <laughs> <laughs> so, Evie, do you want to roll an occult for us and yeah. see if anything jumps out in your notes? Something, something, touchdown. <laughs> Not with her. I Offsides. Was, uh, <laughs> foul ball. Is this, is this icing? Like well, she was. It, a, she was a cold fish, so does it make it icing? She was icing, icing on the cold fish. I, yeah. ooh, icing ooh. is a hockey term. Ah, oh, yes. It's uh, if the thirty-five under eighty. Um, so yeah, so in the notes that you have, <coughs> they're, um, they're sparse. They're mostly, um, folk medicine remedies and things like that. Um, but it's, 
you have not had a time to do an in-depth reading, but in the little notes that he's making, the stuff that's not um, anecdotal and um, like recipes, you know, mm-hmm. for medicines. Um, I feel like there's another word for that, but side side not side mark. I, well, side yeah, notes, like he's made. Yeah, yeah, his his little he's footnotes that he's making notes, yeah. that aren't anecdotes, anecdotal stories, and recipes for remedy remedies. Uh, it's clear, like he's he's like making asking himself questions. Um, he's hype. He's focused on um, extending life, and and like. Like immortality. Frau, yeah, Frau Koppen kind of hinted at he he seems to be searching for immortality, but there's nothing <clears throat> concrete in these notes. He's given you, like I said, he gave you the um, innocuous stuff, the stuff mm-hmm. that's not gonna draw your attention. Yeah, yeah, and based on what Frau Koppen said versus what you're looking at, he's holding out yeah. on stuff. But there's enough there to confirm your suspicions Mm -hmm. or her suspicions, however you want to look at Um, that. So I I basically, I just like, I don't throw them down, but I just like throw them down on the uh, papers down on the table. And um, I'm very, very, very frustrated. And yeah, these... These aren't anything. He didn't give you anything, but he is holding out. His side notes in this, he's talking about seeking immortality, trying to find a way to extend life. Um, You know, some of the things that Frau Koppen was talking about, um, he's trying to figure something out. And... I'm not sure exactly what, but anything else that's in these notes, just the regular uh, remedies and folk medicine, that uh, none of that's going to help us. I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here and <coughs> say he's looking for a way to extend life, possibly to immortality. I think that's what he's trying to figure out. You said you don't know what he's trying to figure out. <laughs> no, about how to go about that. Oh. About how to successfully make that happen yeah but so there's nothing tr- in here there's no spells there's no medicine yeah there's but trying to become immortal isn't necessarily like ooh. it's not like dusting crops boy <laughs> no, okay yeah <laughs> so i get. i guess my question is why are we out here because frau coffin thought something sinister was going on right and so for this in his side notes, it's confirmation to me that he's holding something back. He didn't give you what we need, and he has it. Okay. I mean, we can go back over and talk to him if you want. Um, I think it's going to take a little more than that. I think what we need to do is wait until maybe he's away from the residence or he's asleep, and we go in and we find out what it is. Um, Corey, out yep. of the corner of your eye, you see someone walk by the um window outside yeah outside okay um the ch- they're uh y- you only catch a glimpse of them but they have darker skin darker hair than anyone else in the um village you've seen so far okay like they might be of um maori maori descent yes and uh they might it also it looks like um a child that you knew back in the village the the kid that came and hung out around your house um, okay. looking you know just when he had extra time yeah yeah he'd come visit the uh, the people from you know not around here the leverage family yeah the leverage family so um but like you know that can't be him right um i will stand up without saying much of anything um and like i assume he's passing by a window if i go out the front door i'll be able to see you'd have to go out the front door and around the corner yeah i'll do that okay yeah by the time you get 
you so Loveridge gets up and runs out the door. Oh. I don't run. I walk Hustle. briskly. Yeah. Hustle out the door. Is everything okay, Captain? Uh, just, just a sec. Yeah, and so Where? you get out there and turn the corner, and he's not there. There's how, nobody how, there. How do I feel about knowing that this child's dead? Do you know the child is dead? I assume the child is dead. Everybody's dead. Everybody's gone from the village. I assume they're all dead. Okay. That has so, been my mindset this whole time. Sure. Knowing that this child is dead and then seeing them, am I okay with that? Have I accepted it? Am I still in that state of... It's... Man? Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's odd. Like, it's definitely odd. Um, somewhere, like, yeah. So, in that, that initial reaction mm-hmm. is panic mm-hmm. because that boy is supposed to be dead. You've, like, he, he should not be up walking around. But when you don't... But when you get out there and you don't see him anymore um the feeling is dulled yeah it's maybe 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 just didn't maybe maybe he just had a dirty face and it was just another child from the village walking by and you imagined things because it was you know you had just been talking about it with the doctor like it was on your mind so your mind saw something that wasn't even there but it's not like i've never not just seen things right yeah Yeah, sure Um, yeah We've seen things. Some things. Not all the things. But yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of things. <laughs> not enough. <laughs> We've seen some things. Anybody else on, on the street? Kids? Anybody? Uh you don't see any children, but there are people like, you know, um like uh there's a there's a people working in their home garden okay. or whatever. Okay. Doing doing villager business. Yeah. Uh, you know, that you would expect in the late af- or the afternoon. Okay. Before dinner. All right. I'll just kind of turn back around and go inside. Okay. Back inside. Okay. So, Loveridge comes back in. Then I'll sit down and take a sip of my drink and set it down. And Is everything all right? Uh, yeah, I thought I saw someone I knew. Uh, but they weren't out there. So, uh, are we breaking? Is it your, The intention is for us to break in. Is that what you're suggesting, Miss McCree? <clears throat> I mean, I wouldn't put it like that. But I mean, that's Just what you said, right? To to no. go in when he is not home. Yes. Okay. I'll break into a house. Yeah, you will. Of course, you will. You Italian. <laughs> what? <laughs> we apologize to all our Italian <laughs> listeners. They they are yeah, not oh. mutually exclusive. I happen to be Italian, <laughs> and I like breaking into places. <laughs> If the need you arises. Yourself or your character or both? <laughs> character. <laughs> All of the above. You're going to come home. So there's a Cole's rash of break-ins sitting there playing your Switch. The <laughs> <laughs> Great. Nothing's taken. He's just, yeah. Just just, I just like to know what... Cookies what, are gone. I just like to Video know what the inside of people's houses look like. Yeah. <laughs> it's just about knowledge. Yeah. He traded away all your best Pokemon. Oh, yeah. Man. So, I'm, are, okay. I don't know, Commander. Is that what you want to do? I I think it's a suggestion. I think it will get more, give us more information about what's going on. Up until recently, I would disagree, but with the recent ongoings, it is pertinent. All right. So we're gonna go pull a B and E. Well, ideally, less braking and more in train, but yes. All right, so a little b and a lot of e, got it. <laughs> so how are we going to do this? I don't think you're um, the one that wants to, that knows <laughs> what you're doing, right? So if we're talking about a town, like they wouldn't necessarily lock their doors, or is it because of the ger- the invasion with Germany? Like these people are in fear for their safety and lives, and lock doors aren't going to stop German army. Just no, no, <laughs> I understand that, but well, you know, you have a sense of security when you lock your door because. Yeah. In your mind, it gives you more time I to flee. Th- I don't think the people around here are very afraid. That's one of the things okay. that's super weird about, about this it. town. Okay, there's sense. There's a sense of subdued emotional emotion. Like there's not very much emotion. Yeah. yeah. Is that what we're getting? I would say that's a read you're, you're yeah. getting. Okay. 
Well, I was thinking that felt very. And the only reason I'm asking that is because <laughs> if if that's the truth, then there's no breaking. There's just like we wait till he's gone. <laughs> sure. Right. Yeah, yeah but yeah. we need to we need to get him probably out of the house. arrange a way to get him out of the house. And please do not suggest we shoot someone, anyone. I'm not even I'm on my mind. I w- I was I'm thinking here, strangling right someone, but okay, fine. This awesome. guy work. This guy works out of his house. Is that right? Yes. Oh, he okay. Does. So but it's not going to be for work. He's well. I mean, he's, he's the village doctor. The so okay. So any, yeah. he might be called for someone to get sick. Let's, so, let's so so we can either make someone sick or we can pretend to get sick and get him out of the house. Maybe I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. Guys. <laughs> I love that. Wait, I is going down the poison the water. I already. <laughs> I didn't say that. I just said somehow we you came up with the poison. <laughs> I, I was thinking we dress somebody up uh-huh. like a like a patient and put them on a gurney. Or we could just say that we've got uh, someone radioed us, and ten miles out there's a yeah. wounded someone. And we'll drive you. Yeah, we've yeah. Brought, we've got the <laughs> stuff. We'll send one of the. We brought grunts with us, right? No. We did not bring any grunts. No, not. zero grunts. That is unfortunate. He was supposed to be here. We could split the party, and I can I can well, dr- no, I can I'm get not a sure about that. I didn't listen. No, to we didn't. We no. didn't bring any grunts. Okay. I didn't know if we had brought a dro- who we drove. Who drove? I did. did. You did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, I, that's something else that this probably should just be edited out. But um, you guys did have an incident driving into town, where you saw someone in a white robe. Yeah. And then yes. they vanished into the woods. Right. Oh, I didn't remember that. Sorry, uh, I forgot about figure. that. I was like, why were we so paranoid about the doctor? Oh, now I remember. Yeah, because yeah. there was a dude in a white robe out in the woods, and uh, you stopped <laughs> to investigate, and he had vanished. So Captain McKenzie is offering to drive the doctor out of town? Yeah, sure. I'll drive him out of town. Oh, you did? I can handle the doctor. Okay, here we yeah. go. He oh, says as he's on. fingering his pistol. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, my drive is 20%. Will my driving skills be sufficient? Oh, yeah. The uh, roads here around here are pretty well okay. established, okay. Uh, if not all paved. Okay. They're at least uh, There's clear. There's what? pavement now? Yeah. It, it's the 1940s, not the 1840s. Yeah. Gotcha. But it is a remote mountain village. So, again, yeah. you know, I know. paved it's gravel packed. road. Yeah. yeah. Packed. We had paved roads in for the Roman Empire. In in your mind, John, do, does the entirety of Belgium just consist of remote mountain villages? Yes. It does in this area. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever have you it's ever like been Antwerp? Um, also gentlemen in leader hose and screaming Ricola. It's re- I mean really have you ever been to Brussels? It's really just a collection of small mountain villages kind of squished together. And a lot of sore throats. We're yeah, staying yeah. in a village. Everybody's uh, got a, a sore throat. A remote Everybody's mountain village. Screaming. This is also I'm just wondering have if Have you ever like, heard somebody speak Flemish? It sounds like they have a sore throat. <laughs> That's why it's Flemish. That's why it's Flemish. <laughs> exactly. Uh, That's wow. disgusting. You, yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's called no, Flemish. No, I I did F L E M. I I did my research. Sure. There was there was a place. I forget the name of the town now because I don't have my notes. That's that's not ominous. There was a place at one time. <laughs> no, I did my research before the invade before Germany invaded. There there was a town near the border that was a requirement for sure. the scenario. That existed, and like several miles away were other little villages. Okay, no, that's fine. And I, like I mean, I yes, I'm going off of Google Maps. Uh, yeah, you know uh, what's the elevation map yeah, topography? Topography, and it was a lot of hills and isolated places. Sure, no, that's fine. So, in this area, yes, it's mostly rem- remote mountain villages. Okay. So, so Captain McKenzie is going to take him. I will also hand uh, yes, and is uh, that okay? Or. I was Matt was clarifying. Oh, Sorry. Okay. oh, okay. All right. I will also, um, since we're in this room alone, hand McKinsey my flare gun mm. in case something goes badly. You can get a hold of us. And I do have it actually on my character sheet. Nice. Oh, look at that. We wrote it down. <laughs> well, let's transfer that <laughs> right. over. Yeah. Number one thing on my sheet was a flare gun. <laughs> So you erase it from your page and, nice. and Ed, write nice. it on yours somewhere. Yeah, where is it? Uh, oh, there it is. Equipment, yeah. So what's the – is is he going alone? Just asking. Curious. I'm not in charge here. I, w- I would like to send two people, but I don't know who else would be going. 
out of character, I don't want to send Captain Loveridge with him because he's acting strange and yeah, was he's already been drinking. I can't trust that guy. I mean, Jack well, is already tying one on, right? You could send the Italian. He's Canadian. He's had like four beers. That's breakfast. Uh, <laughs> ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, need, I need six to get right. I want the um, resistance <laughs> member to help with the breaking and entering. Okay. The Italian. The Italian resistance. S. Yeah. And you're not going to go yourself? Well, uh, I actually, I'm going to go. I will go. So I can have plausible deniability for the breaking and entering <laughs> section. <laughs> clever, clever. Wow, that's leadership. <laughs> it, it is, actually. Well, it kind of is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So, break. Let's go. Let's, let's get in there and well, F stuff up. Okay, yeah. F it and yeah. Sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. So what how, is how far apart are the villages out here? It took you guys <laughs> a better part of a day to to drive here. Well, I just don't want to say we're gonna be go. We need to take you fifteen miles out of the village. And he's like, why don't you just call the doctor over there? Oh no, you you could totally say that, like one of your men you. found a place that needs help, yeah. and and like based on on you know we don't like. The guy that would normally respond, like, we, we can't get in contact with him okay. right now. And you guys are, like, right here. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's odd. It's going to raise, you know, a flag, if not a red one. Yeah. It's going to, you know, but he's also a doctor. So, it's, what's he, it's mm -hmm. what he's supposed to do. Hippopotamus oath. Yeah. So, I, like I said, it's uh, it might take, it's, it's probably going to take a convincing role of some kind, but... Uh, I believe that's pronounced hip hop anonymous. Hip hop uh, anonymous. Hip hop anonymous. Hip hop. Uh, hip hop apotamus. My rhymes are bottomless. <laughs> hip, so hip hop. And hip hop the, anonymous. And the the rhyme no, I is. am not familiar with any of that. Uh, I was talking about uh, Adam Sandler's best movie. Oh, I, I, eight which crazy was? nights. Big Daddy. Wow. Supposedly his new comedy stand-up special on Netflix is hilarious. It is. I haven't watched oh, it. Really? It really is. Because all of his movies really that have been on Netflix yeah. have been utter trash. Yeah, but, yeah, but no, but they, this, this is actually really good. Because I saw it and I was like, well, Netflix, I hope this is the end of that contract. Mm -hmm. Please tell me it's the this end of that contract. This is a return to form. People oh, are, good. People are excited about this. Mm -hmm. no. Has anyway. anybody seen the John Leguizamo one? No. Yeah. No. One of the most was I was told it was good on Facebook by someone that I don't remember who. Okay. Good story. Anyway, so... <laughs> All right, so um, I would like to talk with you guys so we can come up with a believable story. Okay. So I will... My plan is to go to them and tell them that our radio... We've received a radio transmission. Do we, do we have a radio? You do? I, and okay. I have a 5% fast talk, so if the story starts going south... I'm not the one who should be doing the talking. What's your fast talk? My mm -hmm. fast talk is 56%, but nice. my persuasion is 79. Well, yeah. I'm going to keep and my I'm mouth shut. Yeah. This is, those I'm are, hoping this those is are our talkers. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say, you yeah. chat him up. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Which is why I'm planning, so it can be a persuasion instead of a fast talk. Very nice, very nice. Okay. Clever, clever. So, basically, we will tell them, and that way, if anyone asks, we all have the same story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That there was, we got a radio in from say twenty five miles or however many clicks that is, uh, thirty five. Mm -hmm. Sure. That uh, one of our patrols found a injured. Well, yeah, okay. So Frau Koppen would be the next closest, yeah, med medical personnel mm -hmm. back in the village or back in your guys' home base. She's dealing with something else and yeah, needs this guy injured trappers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that that's the legit thing, right? Yeah. So sure. yeah, sure. I um, I shouldn't like go with you guys. Well, you're, no, you're I breaking pulled, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I pulled a gun on him. He's not gonna. Uh, no. Yeah. No. So okay. So yeah. So and that's I will also work in an apology about that. Sure. She's an American. You know how they are. <laughs> the he, colon. Not, she's not a wrong. colonist. <laughs> you know the you Colonial. know how the colonies get. Yeah. So um, colonials. Well, that that's you too, Jack. You're a colonial. Oh, that's me too. Except yeah. I'm a I'm a criminal colonial. Yep. Crap. Yep. Whatever. Criminalio. No, that didn't work. Criminal. Cut that. <laughs> We're all part of the Commonwealth. <laughs> so um, you're gonna you're gonna drive them because you know where they're at. Right. Um, 
So they're going to take the truck. That is the case. Okay. Is there a place for us to stay, like a, an inn? Like the tavern? We're in the inn. Listen, in. I'm t- <laughs> tavern does not necessarily mean also has hotel rooms. I, this isn't well, they Zilda. they don't have hotel rooms. They have tavern rooms. Can you imagine if most Actually, of the bars believe... we went to had a hotel room you that could stay in? Awesome. Right? I believe oh. quite literally that's what a tavern is. The tavern is the uh, restaurant at the bottom of an inn. Mm-hmm. Listen, I don't need I don't need your oh look what I know. <laughs> you don't need it, but you're getting it. Listen, you. Um, you yeah, just no. Don't like it when other people you are Italian. More intelligent than that. <laughs> yes, I'm not more intelligent. I'm just more pedantic. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I have that. to look that word up. I like that. I like that. Mm-hmm. That is an appropriate response. Um, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to use that one <laughs> in the future. I'm not more intelligent. I'm just more pedantic. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, think I know what that means. I, I prefer, I don't mean to sound condescending. Condescending is when you talk down to someone. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, this is the place that if you were in town visiting and didn't know someone or have a place to stay, you'd ask here first. I mean, um, we could just stay at the docks, right? No. <laughs> He's not going to be home. He, prob- no. he probably would not be cool with we'll that. We'll try to keep him out on that. Yeah, well, let's get rooms here at the end. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, <coughs> That's the plan. Yeah. So two, I have two rooms. Yeah. Me and the Fisk, and then Miss McCree. Well, we'll get Whoa, this three rooms, you. just so that oh it's yeah yeah because you're totally. coming back less tonight. obvious yeah. that this is a setup. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know how long you guys will be gone. Well, yes, but we're gonna get the rooms and it's then true. do the thing. So yeah, it's yeah, yeah. yeah. That totally. makes get sense. the rooms, do the thing, okay. and, gotcha. and save the world. I guess right. <laughs> Let's hope so. Yeah. Is there a Profit. cheerleader in Profit. Profit. Yeah. <laughs> Step four, question mark. All right. Um, yeah, so that's that sounds great. So the um, you guys call the bartender back in? Yeah. And arrange the three rooms? Yeah. Okay. And we will try to do it late. Um, I will say we'll get a call. We'll fake the call after dinner. That way we can keep him out all night to give you guys the maximum amount of time. Hit under the cover of darkness. Plus, you okay. can murder him and leave him somewhere. To if ditch. need be. Kay. I thought there was no killing. I think Corey and the Fisk would be a great buddy cop movie. <laughs> you you are really <laughs> not yeah, yeah, I yeah. would yeah. watch that. <laughs> yeah. Corey and the Fisk. Corey and yeah. the Fisk. Or an AM DJ team. Sure. <laughs> sure. Corey and the Fisk. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how are we doing on that? episode? That, that's there. actually um, kind of a great place for us to... Uh, take a quick break. As a reminder, we have uh, other podcasts. You can find those all over at nerdsdom.com. And we will talk to you guys next week. And that will do it for us tonight on the Nerds Domain Presents Masks of Nyarlathotep. Remember, you can email us at nerdsdomain at gmail.com. Or find us over on Facebook and Twitter at facebook.com slash nerdsdomain and twitter.com slash nerdsdomain. You can also check out our site at nerdsdom.com. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter while you're there. You can head over to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. We want to thank Passion Nerdly for our music. Don't forget, you can support us at patreon.com slash nerdsdomain and check out our shirts at TeePublic.com.